Welcome back to part three of our mouse tutorial. Now in the second part that we've just done, we've added all the bulk to the body and we've really shaped our mouse to give him this lovely, slightly portly look. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the wrap to our body. But before we did that, there's something that I didn't do in the previous tutorial that I'm going to show you now. What we wanna do is we wanna add some pink to his belly because we wanna add some dimension and some different colors to our mouse so he isn't just all solid white. So I've got my uh, flesh coloured merino wool bats here again. This is the New Zealand one. And I'm just going to take a few pinches of this, not loads and loads. And it's more about the thickness than the diameter. So I'm going to place it there. So that's a bit too big. I don't want it to go past his feet. So I'm just going to tear some of that away and just layer that on top again. But we want to create a nice solid colour. I'm just going to tear a bit more away there, place it on top. Okay, so you want it to just cover just under where his neck is, and then you don't want it to go past his feet. So I'm just going to get rid of a bit more of that. Otherwise, it looks a bit odd later when you felt it down. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to take my twisted needles, and I'm just going to felt that into place. And we're actually going to put some white wool over the top of this, but you'll be able to kind of see the pink coming through. So it'll be very subtle, but it'll just add a nice touch to our mouse and give him his his cute pink belly and it also gives a little bit more bulk as well to that belly of his. And just keep going until it's all neatly felted down. It doesn't need to be too tight because we're going to add more white on top in a second. You just want to get it tacked into place really. So he looks like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this out of the way and I'm going to bring in my felting mat and I'm going to bring in that white uh, Gotland wool bats that we were talking about at the beginning of the tutorial. So what I want to do is I'm going to take some wool and it's going to be roughly the same diameter as the, as the clover mat that I'm using. So I'm just going to tear this piece a little bit. We don't want this to be too thick. It's okay if it's a bit long, but we don't want it to be too thick, and you'll see why in a second. So when I say too thick, I mean in, in its width. I don't mean in terms of the thickness of the, of the actual piece. So I think I might just go for a little bit more, just splay, splay that out and put that on top, and then just felt that down. And this is gonna be the wrap for the body of the mouse. So it's gonna add a little bit more bulk, but it's gonna consolidate all of those pieces that we added earlier on as well. Bring, bring everything together. So we just want to give it a good stab so everything compacts down and you kind of end up with this almost like a sheet of felt. I'm just going to flip it over and do the other side. And it's quite a quick process. You don't need to spend ages doing this because we're going to keep felting again in a minute anyway. It's just so we kind of get the pieces to felt together. Okay, so there you go. So there's our piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear away some of these wispy ends, just holding holding the, the wool with this hand quite far away so it's easy to pull away. Okay, give it a bit of a stretch. And then I'm going to come back in then with my brush mat and I'm going to put my mouse on his tummy and then I'm going to place this on his back, okay? And we're going to pull it relatively tightly and we're going to use our medium twisted needles here. We're not going to go in and use the fine needles yet because we still want to try and sort of speed the process up for ourselves. So hold it really taut and I'm going to take my, far, my medium needles and just tack this Mommy, down into place. Mommy, yes, Mommy, Mia. Finally, I'm on level, I'm on level 10. Level 10? That's and amazing. I'm on the swinging one. You're on the swinging look one. Look for me. That's amazing. Yeah, Mommy, just look. Mia, do you know you're going to be on the video? Your voice is going to be on the video, sweetie. Oh. That's okay. See you in a bit. Can you close the door, please? Okay. Bye. So what I'm doing is I'm just felting the sides first of all and then I'm just going to turn it round and then I'm just pull the other side round nice and tightly and I'm just going to felt that side down too just to tack it into place and once you've got the sides down you can really work on shaping it then.
do apologise. It's the joys, the joys of the summer holidays. Lots of interruptions, but hopefully it won't affect how you are able to replicate this tutorial. So you can see, so I've tacked all this down into place. So what we want to do now is I'm just going to tack it round on the neck area a little bit and under the arms with the medium needles because I just want a bit of extra felting there. Just tear this away a little bit. We don't need all of this because we're going to place a head wrap on as well later. Any loose bits that you do get, just felt them into the head. It just gets rid of them for the time being. But be cautious. You, if you've got lots of bulk under here, and this was why we don't want it to be too um, long in its width, what you'll have is you'll have lots of gathering under the arm, and then you're going to have loads of ball that it's going to be really difficult to get rid of. So you want to try and keep that to an absolute minimum, which is why I said you want to keep it relatively narrow. And you can always go back and add some more if it doesn't quite cover the body. So I'm just going to felt underneath the arms, again using my needles side by side, just to use them to get in there. And then again, I'm just going to felt down under this other arm as well. And get that nice and tightly felted. Don't be afraid to move limbs around as you're felting as well, um, because sometimes they can just get in the way. So you want to be able to be in a position where you can just move them out of the way. So I'm going to felt down into the bottom now. So I'm just going to move the tail forward so it's kind of facing his head. And I'm just going to felt underneath. Go careful here because you'll still have the wire from the tail. So you don't want to go in too hard. And we're also going to felt around the legs in a moment too. Okay, and then I'm just going to felt around the little thighs we've created. So I'm just using my needles and felting that wrap against the little legs. Don't let it kind of fold over and gather. Try and keep it as, as kind of even as possible. And then I'm just going to move that back a bit. And the nice thing with this um, floristry wire is it's nice and strong, so it's not going to snap or anything like that with lots of bending. Okay, so that'll do for the moment. And then we're just going to do the same on the other leg. Doesn't have to be anything too major yet. Felt that down. Okay, so we've tacked the body wrap into place. What we're going to do now is we're going to swap out our medium needles for the fine needles. And we're going to take a bit more of this white Gotland wall bat. And I'm going to take a very small amount. I'm not going to take loads and loads. And I'm just going to make it so that it's a little bit opaque in terms of how dense the density of the wool is and I'm going to place that and I'm going to place it so that the fibers are going um, horizontally along the body like so and then I'm just going to get my medium twisted needles and I'm just going to felt this down onto the mouse's belly so we can see that pink coming through it's nice and subtle it's not too overt and we get a nice even felt with those needles as well. And then just felt it on the sides until everything is felted down into the piece. And those legs, if you've got any strands that go down on the legs, try and keep those strands there and felt them into the legs. Don't feel tempted to kind of fold wool back on itself because you can see it. So you want to kind of try and felt the wool as it lies, if that makes sense. So you can see here it wants to go this way, so I'm going to felt it down in that direction, keeping it going in the same direction, going against the leg. Like so. Right, 
So once you get to this stage, we're at the stage now where we want to start to shape our body and make it look a bit more mouse-like. So this bit can be relatively time-consuming. Um, you can spend as long as you want on doing it, really, but obviously the longer you spend, the better the shape you're going to get. So I'm going to start off with the legs first of all. We're going to start tidying those up. So I'm just going to felt into the legs making sure that all that wool is integrated into it. There's probably lots of looseness around here as well that we want to felt down to. So I'm just going to give that a good felt. And really ensuring that this wrap that we've added is felted into the rest of the wraps and pieces that we added earlier on. So everything sticks together really nicely. Okay, and then a bit more felting around the belly. And then let's go for the second leg. Still being really cautious of those, those wires. You are kind of felting against the wire a little bit here just to kind of push that wool in. So just be really careful, especially with the fine needles because obviously they're a lot more delicate than the medium needles we were using a moment ago. And they'll be much easier to snap. So just be cautious when you're doing this. Okay. And I'll come back to you in a second when I'm finished with this part. Okay, so I've finished felting the wool into his legs and I've also added these diagonal indentations to give him the impression that he's got these lovely chunky little thighs that he could kind of go off wandering on your cabinet and steal your cheese and all that kind of thing. And they're really easy to do. All you need to do is create a guideline using your fine needles. So just look at your mouse and then you want to do two diagonal lines deciding where roughly your lines are going to be and then just mark them with your fine needle first of all, because you know sometimes they can go a bit wonky and they're not very symmetrical. So it's good to kind of mark them out first. And then once I've done that, I've taken my medium needles and then I've just felted down into his legs, just to create the impression of thighs, like that. So the other thing that I've done is I've also felt it around his waist. And again, this is really simple again. All I've done is I've taken my fine needles and I've felt it using my fine needles, the top, so under his arms, around there, and making sure that the wall all compresses down so you're kind of getting this narrower section here and then this more rounded section out here so he's kind of, he kind of has a waist almost and then it kind of goes out into his hips and his bottom. So you wanna just really focus on felting that down and creating that shape, especially around the back as well, because you're, what you'll find with the back is that you get a lot of looseness. So if you just go around the back, ensure that it's all felted down nice and tightly. And that as you felt it, you're get, getting a nice even felt as well. So it kind of um, graduates to, from smaller to bigger. You don't want it to be an abrupt, it's small, oh, and then it's massive. You want it to kind of gradually increase in size. So really think about that as you're felting it and ensure you don't have to go very deeply with your needles, just take your time. And like I said, because they're the fine twisted needles, they don't tend to leave an indentation, but you still don't want to go too deeply with them because we want to create that lovely, smooth finish to our end to the sculpture when it's done when it's completed so just really focus on going underneath the arms and just be cautious when you go under the arms because there's wire there from where we added our our arm um, our wire for our arms earlier okay and there you go what you can also do is you can kind of felt around the legs a bit more if you want to this little gap here just to give more dimension and more shaping to him which you can do here just round just round by, by the foot and then just under his tail as well just want to make sure that this is all felted down so you get a nice gap between the legs and the tail okay so your sculpture should now look something like this and in the next part, we're going to be adding the head wrap and he's really going to take form. It's very exciting. So I'll see you in a moment.
Right, so the lower half of the wrap for our mouse's torso has been added. So what we need to do now is add the second wrap to his head and really start shaping that so we can add his eyes and nose later on. So I'm going to move my mat out of the way. My mouse is drunk. Move him over here and we're going to go back to the brush mat to create the piece for his head. So this is a bit different to the one we made for his body in that it's going to be a bit longer. So I'm going to take quite a few strands of wool here just to kind of build it up. Uh, that one will be not quite as long as that. And that one. So I'm just going to layer a few pieces on top of each other. A really good trick here to gauge how, how long you need this to be is to take your wall once you've kind of gathered it and you've got a rough guesstimate of how long you want it to be. And then just place it from the neck over the head of your mouse and then you can see where it sits. So I think that's actually possibly a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna take some length away because I don't want it to be too big. I'm gonna make it, pull it so it's a bit wider as well because we want it to cover all of the head. So we need it to be wide enough to do that. So I'm just gonna pull it a little bit to get it a bit wider. And I'm just gonna pull some of this length away. Like that. Okay, so I've now got a piece that is measuring before felting at, oh, get it around the right way, Charlotte. So it's going to be about 10 inches um, by about 4 inches in width. So I'm just going to felt that down like we did the, with the last piece we made. Felt all those fibres together, get them nice and intertangled and compressed into each other. And you want to move, because this is longer than the mat, you want to sort of lift this and then move it so you can felt further down. And then I'm just going to spin it round and do the same thing on the other side. And you just want to make sure that you've got the majority of it sort of relatively compacted, tightly compacted together. This is quite a nice quick process. So it really means that you can kind of crack on with the more interesting stuff rather than spending ages on felting kind of bits of section together for your, for your sculpture. So that's the piece felted together. So I'm going to come back to my brush mat now. I'm going to put my mouse on top and this time I'm going to place the head wrap so that it's going from the back across the top of the head and over to the torso. So you've got an even coverage, so you've got enough wool either side to anchor this piece down into position. So I'm going to take my medium needles again and I'm just going to felt with my needles side by side um, on the horizontal into the neck just to get that tacked down. I don't want to felt with my medium needles into the chest area at the moment because I don't want to ruin all our lovely smooth work that we did a moment ago. So I'm going to use my fine needles for that. And then same on the other side, I'm just going to turn it over and I'm just going to felt into that neck area to get it tacked down. Just be a bit cautious of any wire when you're doing this bit. Okay, so once that's all tacked into position, I can't speak. Speak. Okay, so once that's all tacked into position, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the sides down. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of the whole tutorial because this is the part where if you end up with loads of gathering, it's going to cause you loads of problems down the line. So take your time with this. Don't rush it. So what we need to do here is we need to first of all gauge how much excess wool we've got either side. And we've got a little bit too much here. We've got about an inch and I don't want that much. I want slightly less than that. So I'm just going to pull some away because if you've got too much wool coming out from the sides, you're going to end up with loads of kind of clumping and gathering together. So I'm just going to get rid of this bit as well. Don't worry if you take too much away because you can add some in later. So 
So I'm just going to move it around a little bit, get rid of that. So this is how much I've got left now, so either side. So it's about sort of a couple of centimetres maybe. So I'm going to take my medium needles and the first thing I'm going to do is pull my arm so it's going straight outwards, okay? So you can see it going straight out there. And then I'm going to go down the centre, so sort of right in the middle of the head. And I'm going to tack that down with my medium needle into the head. So it looks like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to felt down the corners. So it's kind of like when you ice a cake and you're placing the icing over it and you're trying to manoeuvre those kind of corners down so you don't end up with any creases and things like that. It's very much the same principle with this. So I'm going to go into the corner with my medium needle. I'm going to hold them on the vertical um, and I'm just going to go in and again felt down the centre of that corner that we've got there. And then this corner here, or this end here, I'm going to do the same again, just felt down the centre. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same on the side, the other side. So I'm just going to pull his arm out, I'm going to felt down the centre, in the middle of that piece, and then I'm going to felt those corners down as well, straight through the centre again. So through the centre of those corners, like so. Okay, next we want to start to kind of even everything out. So we're going to then hold our needles on the horizontal and we're just going to felt in between those corners that we've made and just ease them down like that. And I'm just going to keep going. So start from about halfway, don't go all the way to the top because I don't want to use the medium needles too much on this. It's just to get this bit into place because this is the hardest bit. And just take your time with this. And just think about where you need to felt in order to get that smoother finish. And then I'm just going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. And you'll have some tiny little creases now, but nothing too horrendous. And we can get rid of those with our fine needles, so it's not a problem. And then this one. And then just finally this section here. A bit too much there. I'm just going to get rid of that. It's always good to get rid of it before when you see it rather than sort of have a go and then it's too late. And then felt that down into place. So you shouldn't end up with too much wool on the shoulders of the mouse. Okay, it should be relatively clear. I'm just going to go down this one as well. And if you do suddenly think, oh no, I've got a bit too much wool here, I don't know what to do. All you need to do is get your embroidery scissors and just cut it away. Don't worry too much about cutting it because we can sort that out later. It's better to do that than it is to, to felt in something that's too thick. Okay, so I'm just gonna felt that down a bit more and anchor that down. Spin it around. Such a great stress buster needle felting. It really is kind of, you know, you can just stab something for hours on end and not get arrested. <laughs> it's, um, it is a good one. Right, I'm just gonna tear away some of this excess we've got against the chest here because I don't wanna cover up all our lovely pink belly that we've made. So I'm just gonna tear some of that away. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. It's a bit lumpy, a bit bumpy, but you can kind of see the start of the head. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to move my medium needles away and I'm going to move on to my fine needles. And now we're going to start really shaping and adding some personality into our head. So I'm going to start off by felting at the neck. 
and felting down any loose fibres that we've got into our torso, felting downwards. And getting them nice and tight. And then round the arms and then the same on the back, felting down those loose fibres. Move those arms out of the way. And just get it looking nice and neat. Okay. So now what we want to do is focus on getting rid of all this bumpiness and squidge. So I'm just going to start felting from the top of the head and then down again back towards the neck so we're kind of going up and then downwards with our felting you can see i can see there's lots of wonkiness here where i've got slightly slightly bigger air pockets on one side than the other so i'm just going to felt that down but just be methodical with your felting and take your time but we're looking, we're aiming to get this nice and sort of flattish and get a lovely um, mouse-like nose here eventually. But it does, it takes a bit of a work and the head definitely takes more work than the, than the body because there's more shaping to it involved. So once you've made your first mouse, which may take a little while because everything always does when it's your, your first go but as you get used to it you'll be you'll be knocking them out and you'll be giving them to your friends and family and selling them in Christmas markets it's going to be awesome just felt around here and then felting also under the neck as well. You want to create kind of almost a line here so you've got that divide between the head and the and the uh, chest area. So, but we don't want to go too crazy, but we do want to create a, a bit of a line, or I say a line, sort of an angled line going upwards to where his nose is going to be, if that makes sense. I'm just going to felt into the sides. going to felt around the top now as well and just get a bit more shape to the top of his head and by using the fine needles you're going to get that lovely smooth finish it really is the key it does take a lot longer to felt things down but you do end up with a lovely overall finish to your to your sculpture rather than using a medium needle or a coarse needle, which would be completely wrong for this, which would speed the process up, but then you've got all those holes and things and, and you don't want that. So that's why I like using the fine needles here. And then when, what you can start doing when you get to this stage, what I like to do is, is squeeze the sculpture because it's almost a bit like a plasticine or a clay the wall now, just to kind of work out actually how do I want my mouse to be, how, what sort of face shape do I want him to have. So you use your fingers to kind of squeeze the wall into position and then just felt it once it's squeezed into the position that you want it to be in. So it kind of, by squeezing it, it kind of gives you a quick overview of how it will look once it's felted. So it's quite a good guide for you to know sort of how your mouse is going to end up and get it to how you want it to look. So squeezing is a good, is a good technique. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, phew. I've got my needle stuck in the wire and that is why you pull them out in the same direction you put them in because if I tried to pull them and twist them, they would have broken inside the mouse. But because I pulled them out in the same direction, they, um, they didn't break, luckily because I would have been very sad. Okay. So I'm just gonna give him another squeeze and just look at him as well. This side is a bit wonky donkey, so I'm just gonna go around this bit. 
The other thing you could do when you're doing this is go onto somewhere like Pinterest and just get some ideas of different mouse faces or other animal faces and sort of shaped heads and things that you like and build up a pin board of all the things that you like and you think might look quite good as a sculpture so that when you come to create your sculptures you can then add some of that in as well and really make it your own. I think that's what art is, isn't it? It's about borrowing from other people and incorporating it into different works, but not kind of copying, kind of taking elements, using those elements with other elements to create something new. That's what I think art is all about. And obviously invoking emotions in people and creating things that people like to look at. But um, I think that's how we develop and how we improve as artists. And, and create our own style is by looking at others, looking at what we like, looking at what we don't like, thinking, oh, I don't want to do that because that's not really my thing, but I really like that. That's certainly what I've done over the years, is sort of taking inspiration from other people and then just building on it. So you can see our mouse head starting to take shape now. So I'll come back to you in a moment once I've finished felting him all down. Right, so our mouse now looks like this. So he's definitely starting to look a lot more mousy, but I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been doing just to get his head nice and tight. So the first thing is, when I'm felting, especially around the back end, I'm starting, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm starting in the middle and I'm almost kind of slightly pulling the wall downwards and felting in a downwards direction into the back and this just helps to pull the wall taut more on the top of the head and give him a nice tight felt so that's the first thing i've been doing i've also been just working on felting his nose a bit more and getting that a bit more narrow so i haven't been going in really deeply with this but just kind of felting on a bit of a diagonal and getting that slightly more pointed. We're going to do more to the, to the nose later to get that mousy look to it, but I just want to get to the stage now where we've got enough bulk to work with later on to give him that super cute mousy look that we're after. And then the other thing I wanted to show you, I've just spotted a bit of a looseness in the arm, so I just want to quickly nip that in the bud before we carry on, is this is where I cut out that extra piece so I've got a bit of a gap here so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of the Gotland white and I'm going to pull pull it apart and put it back on top of each other like we have been doing throughout this tutorial and then I'm just going to place it so the walls are kind of going vertically and then I'm just going to felt that over the top and no one will ever know what I've done And it just hides it nicely and gets it all nice and neat. And just felt that round the arm. I'm going to do a headstand for me a moment. Okay. So that's looking good. Happy that our mouse is looking good. It's a little bit bulky there. I'm just going to felt that down. And just go around the side again. And there you go. So he's definitely looking a lot more like a mouse now. So in the next video that I'm going to show you, I'm going to be adding his nose, his eyes, and we're going to be doing a bit more with his arms as well. So I will see you there. Bye for now.